Hi guys! I hope you're doing fantastic. I you hope you're doing well. I don't know if you remember, but in my last videos, I kind of mentioned that I signed up for a photography class. And, you know, I'm a complete beginner when it comes to photography. I absolutely have no experience whatsoever. But I did sign up anyways, because I wanted to challenge myself and I wanted to learn a little bit more about this whole world of photography and right now i'm in the first semester and we're shooting on film so we're using an analog camera we're developing the film ourselves so that means that we go into the dark room we use all these chemicals to develop the film and then ultimately we also print it ourselves so we end up with printed photographs that we did all ourselves and that is quite magical yeah so today this is gonna be what we're gonna look at and i just really hope you're gonna um So this is the camera I bought, it's a Minolta secondhand camera that I got from eBay. Actually had no idea what camera I should buy or what camera is supposed to be good. But our teacher provided us with some good options, he sent us various links and I just chose one of them. And he also suggested the Ilford HP5 film which has 36 frames, it is a low contrast film and it's got an ISO of 400 which is sort of like your standard ISO I suppose for okay lighting conditions so that's what I got and put it inside the camera and you're done. Now before we are able to start shooting let's acquaint ourselves with the basic adjustments you can play with on your camera while shooting. We have aperture, shutter speed and ISO. They can all kind of artistically influence the final image. So aperture, for instance, changes the depth of field of a photograph. So you can either have a very shallow depth of field where the foreground or the background is blurred, or you can have a very deep depth of field where your entire frame is in focus. Shutter speed can bring about movement in a photograph. So if you choose to have a rather fast shutter speed, you freeze time, you freeze motion, but if you choose a very slow shutter speed, you can portray movement in a very different way, in a very kind of blurred, ghost-like way. And lastly, we have ISO, which you choose according to the different lighting situations you're gonna be in. ISO also influences how much grain you're gonna have in your photograph. So if you choose a very high ISO, you will have a very grainy image, but if you choose a low ISO, you won't have as much grain or maybe also no grain at all. That's it. Artistically, this is photographer's choice. Play with all these features, but now it's time to shoot. <laughs> Hi guys. This is a very important day because it's the first time I'm actually going out and taking pictures with my camera. Here it is. <laughs> And yeah, it's the first time and I, it's fun, you guys, it's really fun. My teacher said that we're not supposed to take really complicated pictures right now. We're not supposed to focus on the art so much in the sense of like taking a very creative picture, but rather focus more on taking technically correct picture. So that's what I'm, I'm doing right now. I'm taking pictures that are hopefully correct in the sense of like how I'm gonna uh, adjust my shutter speed and my, what is it called in English? Aperture? I don't know, I'm so sorry. Okay, yeah, so it's really fun. Hello, it's me. <laughs> no, it's okay. I will go for a walk now. I brought the camera with me in the hope of taking the pictures that will be the more technical ones and not the ones that have to look a little a little bit better, I suppose. Yeah. So I will try to take pictures. Hopefully I will be able to do it. Okay. So I'm out here shooting with my camera. And I'm trying to do this game of depth of field, trying to make things blurry in the background, and then also I've tried to work with shutter speed, so there's this effect of like something is moving. This is my favorite effect when it comes to taking pictures so far. Almost looks like a ghost.
Guys, this is actually a lot of fun. I was kind of not really in the mood to go out today. It's like, ugh, it's gonna be a lot of work, but it wasn't. It's so much fun. The thing that I really, really love about photography so far is you see things differently. You walk on the same streets and you look at things differently because you want to take pictures so you look at every detail you look at every little thing that you would never look at in a normal situation and i love that it's like you're reimagining reinventing Sometimes the film can get stuck inside its canister, so for that purpose we perform a little trick with double-sided tape and a strip of old film nobody needs, just to be able to retrieve the film outside of the canister. And then we round the edges a little bit on each side, and then it's time to go inside the dark room. So I'm going to go inside and develop. Now, inside the dark room, the only thing you have to perform in absolute darkness is to get the film outside of the canister and roll it, basically load it onto the reel that I have here. And after you do that, you have to put it inside a film tank, put the lid on top, secure, and then you can switch back on the light. So this is the only thing you have to perform in darkness. And the rest of the procedure is done in normal lighting. So here I'm just preparing my materials, I'm preparing my film tank, my scissors, the reel, so I have everything ready and I know where everything is while it's gonna be super dark. You close the lights. Once you're done with that, you move on to the chemicals. So the chemical baths, you work with the development agent, you work with the fixing agent, and then you do a final rinse with a wetting agent. Throughout, you also do basic baths with water. It's not just chemicals, but you know, it's, it's a fun procedure, but it's asking for precision. So you have to measure everything. You have to look at your time. Once you're done with that, you can take your film outside of the tank and the reel and look at it and be proud of it and happy and whatever. And then you can just hang it and let it dry. And that's it. Now we have our negatives, but it's really hard to know which image is good and which isn't, right? I mean, just by looking at the negatives, you can't really know which photograph is a great one. So it's vital to create that contact sheet. And a contact sheet is just what you see right here. It allows you to view your photographs frame by frame. So you create that inside the dark room as well. You put the photo paper inside different baths in order to create your final contact sheet. And you can also take notes on your contact sheet, state which image you like, especially well and which you consider to be a fail it's yours you can do whatever you want with it but it's important because without that you really don't know what images are great and what images aren't and the final step of course is printing out your favorite images and having them in a larger size again this procedure is done inside the dark room with the red lights on inside the chemical baths but you're not just trying to print it just as it is, but you're trying to edit it just like you would edit a picture or a photograph in Photoshop. This is exactly what you're also trying to do inside the darkroom. But instead of having a digital platform to do it, you're using your hands, filters, and more light, less light in order to create a darker or lighter feel on the final result. So it's manually done. And here you can see some of my results. You can see some of my mistakes because maybe I moved my hands too quickly. I wasn't successfully placed placing my hands in order to to create the perfect mask but anyways i mean this is the fun of it this is what it's all about trial and error this is my final note and i think this applies to all art forms 
It is really beautiful to dwell into the world of your chosen art form, read, study, and learn about its history, its pioneers, their history, and what had set them apart from the rest. Watching documentaries on them, reading books, studying their body of work, and how it evolved with time passing. It gives an insight, equips with new techniques and stimuli, and it also enriches your own thought process. So the next time when you take your camera to shoot, you won't be the same as before, and you will most definitely witness your personal practice and art benefiting from it. You know, once I look at other photographers' body of work and I realize that, oh, you know, he was shooting that and he made it look like this, or he was going down on the floor and made things look completely different just by having a camera angle that's from the bottom and looking upwards and then maybe this gives me the inspiration to go down on the floor and try it myself and then you take things you try them out maybe you copy them in the beginning but only through that process you can also create your own unique artistic sort of identity. It's really important to not put that extra pressure on yourself when you start out with something and you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot be original right now. Of course, you're not gonna be able to be original in your first steps. It's, it's completely difficult and maybe also impossible only if you're like the ultimate, I don't know, star. Sometimes people have that ability to do it right away, but I think for most of the people, it's really difficult to get out and be original, unique, amazing, contribute to the world of this art form in the first trials of theirs. Just take it easy, you know? That's what I say to myself. We need that number and mass of mistakes and errors that are gonna lead us to these amazing artworks and even our teacher said that you know there was this professional photographer that took I don't know thousands of pictures throughout his career and he only thought that 100 of his pictures were great and imagine like he was doing this for years and years how many pictures he would have taken like thousands and thousands of pictures and he only thought of 100 being good so i mean it is crazy like the analogy so just let go of that perfectionism struggle and i say that to myself while i say it to you because i think it's something that really makes the whole process so much harder and it adds another layer of restraint and another layer of limitation which is really invisible and not so easy to see through and you're like why is this so hard all of a sudden but once you realize that oh i've put this extra burden extra weight on myself that makes it a lot more challenging for me to enjoy it once you kind of lift that veil and you're saying i don't need you go to the trash you're not even like helping me get better anyways i think this process is really fun i think it's really interesting to see how you just start with shooting a roll of film and you end up having printed pictures because you took the time and effort to develop them and print them and put them in the chemicals and all these things. I think it's really interesting. I'm just winging it and having fun with it and I hope you can have fun with something that maybe you wouldn't have ever thought you would do. I wish you, wish you all the best. Thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you and I'll see you very, very soon in my next video. Bye!